Hi there, and welcome to the Couples Expert Podcast. This is Stuart Fensterheim, the Couples Expert. Hello, Arizona. I just got back from a conference in San Francisco. It was such a wonderful place. I went there for a counselor's workshop on really taking a look at self-sabotaging behaviors, both from a counselor's perspective as well as from the perspective of clients. And I had my wife come along. One of the things that's really special about that is at another time in our marriage, in another time in our relationship, I would not be able to do that because of kids and responsibilities. And what that brings up for me is really the whole concept that what we're in is a stage in our life that is really about the kids are grown or are thereabouts. The, both of my daughters are in ASU. And we now have an opportunity to really spend time together in a much different way than we ever have. And that's what this podcast today is really about. It's about taking a look at your relationship and really understanding that the two of you really have an opportunity to really make your relationship something different than it's ever been because in this stage of your life, there are different challenges. But what's important about that is in order for that to happen, you really have to be ready for it. And so many couples, as you know, we've been doing this series on the early stages and the middle stages. So many couples have not prepared their relationship for knowing how to survive these later years. And that's really what we're going to be doing today. I'm going to be speaking to you today about how to have a loving, connected, and authentic relationship with your spouse or partner in the later years. At this life stage, we go, or hopefully, going through as a long-term couple. And as a long-term couple, you've had to address many issues and challenges prior to this. And if you haven't done those successfully, this stage could be a very lonely place and that the retirement years, the years in which the two of you really look forward to, think about, dream about for many years, when the kids are grown or even when the kids are out on their own and have a family of their own, what we're hoping for is that me and my partner are embarking on the last stage of our life And that stage of our retirement with our spouse being such a significant time of love and connection because the two of you finally have built your life to a place where really you can now enjoy the fruits of your labor. But so often that time can be so difficult and it can feel to some very lonely and empty. And that's really sad for someone like me who know that there's an answer of how to go about having a relationship where the two of you not only have a good enough relationship, but have a special relationship. And it really brings to mind for me this quote that I've heard recently that I came across that I want to share with you. And the quote goes like this, relationships last long not because they're destined to last long. Relationships last long because two brave souls, two brave people, make a choice to keep it alive, to love each other, to fight for what matters to both of you, and to work for it in a way where both people are happy, secure, and in love. Now that a powerful quote. And I want all of you, as I go through this material, to think about that quote. Because this time in our life is full of so many changes. And there's a lot of beginnings and a lot of endings that happen as a result of this. And it can be really difficult to navigate those waters, those treachery places, and even have lots of remorse about what your life has been. 
And if you lost a connection with the partner that you've tried to develop a relationship with over your lifetime, that's going to be a pretty awful experience to look back or to look at your partner and say, we feel like strangers. We're living in a house together. We're finally here having the lifestyle that we wanted, that we've worked for, but that we're living separate lives. Lives that don't connect, lives that interact, and we're so separate. And what that's going to bring up for both of you is a period of time when you ask yourself, should I even continue in this relationship? It might feel that the only thing that you're looking for is emptiness, loneliness, and not knowing if your partner is there for you, that you can count on them. And as a couple, that empty feeling has the two of you really shutting down for one another. So what we're going to address today is really that experience of how to make sure that the two of you don't ever have that kind of experience. Well, what I'm going to do is really talk about two things. One is launching your children who are now launching either as a college student, a student who works, or a child of yours that have established now a relationship where they now have their own family. And we're going to look at some of those aspects. Before I do that, though, I want to remind everyone something. I want to remind you what the mission of the Couples Expert is, remind you that you can please subscribe to my podcast. The more people who subscribe for it, the more the message of my, my mission gets out there. And I would like all of you to go to my iTunes channel, the Couples Expert Podcast, and please, please write me a review, an honest review, but a review because the more reviews we have out there, the more people notice. And I really want this podcast to be something that people really see as the go-to place, the place that you go to, really to feel like you're, I'm welcoming in, into my home, that we're sitting here, we're just chatting, we're talking about things that matter, and that you always know that it's warm, it's loving, and we're just having a cup of coffee, just talking. So what I want to remind you is my mission. My mission here is to really establish a place where two people who are in this world together, who are trying to take their relationship to a special place, a place where the two of you really understand you're there for one another, and not only for couples who are struggling, but what we know, and as a matter of fact, I've been thinking about doing a couple of podcasts down the road a bit on how to take your relationship from good, because some of us have a really good relationship. We're, we're, we're happy there, but we want it to be better. We'd like it to be great. So we can. I'm going to do some podcasts down the road of how to go from a good relationship to a great relationship. So that's really my mission to help you two really understand that you're in this world together. You're not alone because I'm here to be your guide, to be the facilitator, to help both of you have that deep, wonderful relationship that we all crave, one in which we don't feel alone. And what we know, what the research has told us, is that the efforts to have a relationship like that are not just worthwhile, but are essential, essential for our own happiness, our physical well-being, and our psychologically, and a change that can happen, that we can change the world together. This mission, this journey of mine, will change the world for you, for me, and for all of us in our society. And we can really develop a deep place of trust and love where you can really feel as a couple that you have a relationship in which not in any one stage, but in all stages of your lifetime, then you can have a relationship 
where the two of you understand that you're building a life, you're building a love, and that you're in this together. So let's, let's move on to the actual content here, which is really about how do we, what do we do? How do we get through this stage? One of the things that we know is in this stage, the biggest thing is we are launching our children who hopefully have the message that was given to them by the two of us that love is about connection and working together and really having a place where you can have your needs met, those needs of attachment, and that the two of you can really launch these kids with a sense of pride that you have given your children tools and have role modeled for them how to deal when there's conflict, that life is about a journey, it's not a sprint, it's a jog, and that growing together means keeping each other as the most important thing in the world. What we also hope for is that your children have a positive relationship, not with only one of you, but with both of you. And the exciting part of this stage, at least for me with my children, has been I no longer have to deal with the day-to-day -day stress that comes with discipline. Because what I hope for and what I see with my own two children is that they really become autonomous. They really have the right foundation that my wife and I has been able to give them a sense of how to live a life that they've gone through some of their own struggles of independence and figuring out what do they agree with, what don't they agree with, and that I don't have to worry about the future. You see, my wife and I have been married now a bit, and we both have been married before. And one of the things that I know, which was sort of touching for me, at one point when I was about to get married, my father-in-law and I had a conversation. And one of the things that I know that came from that conversation was a sense that he began to feel at peace knowing that his daughter was going to be taken care of by me, that I would be kind and gentle to her, and that I would make sure for the rest of her lifetime that she doesn't feel alone. And that brought to him an incredible peacefulness. And my in-laws, both my mother-in-law and father-in-law, both have a sense of peace now. Think about that. A sense that your child will be taken care of. And if the two of you launch your children with a sense of peace, that they'll be okay because you've given them the foundation of what they need to have a healthy, happy relationship. There's nothing more wonderful than that. And being free from those parental demands allows us as individuals to focus on our careers, to focus on the relationship. And what it does also bring up, however, is some boundary issues. So that when we're really moving on, we have to remember We've done our job with the kids, and that as grandparents, as in-laws, that our place is not to interfere, is not to step in, is to guide and send the message to our kids that we're there for them. Now, what happens here, and this is the typical part, what happens here for many couples is the conflict of what is enough what is too much? How much help should I give? If my kids are struggling financially, should I give them money since we have more resources at this time in our life? Do the two of you agree on how to handle that? That lack of agreement, that conflict triggers people in an incredible way. And if you two have not established a relationship where you feel secure, and feel important to your partner, 
these arguments can pull you so far apart. People can shut down, and it's really, really a sad place where two people fighting over a child that they love about not feeling that their partner understands each other and that you're going to do whatever you're going to do, so why should I even open my mouth? I hear that a tremendous amount. What that usually says to me, if this is a couple sitting in my office, is they haven't done the work. They haven't done the work, and to really be able to be vulnerable, authentic, and really understand that they're in this together. And if that comes up for the two of you, I urge you to reach out to someone, because what that suggests is that there's some real emptiness that's going on, that if you don't address that in the later years, the difficulty that that creates could be disastrous to the two of you, to where you live the rest of your life feeling very much alone. And we don't want that, because it's not necessary to have that kind of relationship. One of the biggest issues that come up in the later years are health issues. And what we have to do is really address those. We have to take a look at the changes that come up in your physical health. We have more aches and pains. Our bodies just don't work the same way that they once did. Things like becoming hard of hearing, glasses, aches, painful experiences in our joints, all of those things if they're not discussed openly, particularly some of the sexual issues that come up. Men tend to have more erection problems. Women tend to have more dryness. And unless you're able to talk about these things, what ends up happening is you pull inward. You shut down. You feel alone. And what you end up doing is just getting by, putting one foot in front of the other, accepting the fact that you don't have someone in your life that you truly can turn to. And what we know through the work that I do here, and anyone that works is with couples who work with an attachment model, can truly help you to you have a relationship where you don't feel alone, where you know that the needs for feeling love can be met by your partner, and your partner is right there with it. You know, what happens with all of this and with our physical makeup is our brain may say one thing, but our body tells us one. I, I jokingly tell my wife all the time she's a dream killer. And she knows I'm joking. But uh, there are things like running a marathon. That has been a dream of mine. But there is no way I am at 61 years old running 26 miles. It's not happening. I may run a half marathon, and I'm actually working toward that, but to run a marathon is unrealistic. And when she looks at me and she says, a marathon, are you nuts? When statements like that get made, I could find myself getting very triggered by her. And if I don't have a very clear sense that she's the person that says to me and has said to me over and over again, that I'm one of the kindest people she knows and how much she loves me. If that wasn't in the forefront, I could really see myself getting irritated, angry, pulling away and saying, she doesn't understand. But with those messages being an ongoing, frequent thing that we send to one another, she can joke like that and it'd be okay. It actually is a fun thing that we do with one another. Because periodically, I might turn to her and say, you know, here's something else you, that you're going to kill the dream, is I want to climb Mount Everest. And we all know that that's not a real dream. It's really cold there. My legs would give out. I wouldn't even enjoy it. But I might say that to her just so she can give that reaction. So. At this point, one of the advantages of having children gone, even if you are struggling, 
one of the things we can do is refocus our energy on our relationship, developing a new relationship with both our partner, our wife or husband or boyfriend or girlfriend, and also developing an adult relationship with our children. And we basically need to make sure that we allow the children to hear the message that they're in charge of the grandchildren, they're the ones that matter, they're the parents, they get to make those choices. And what we want to never allow to happen is our partner of spouse, the person we've been living our life with, raising the children, feel less important than the children. The two of you are in this together when it comes to the grandchildren or when it comes to the child. Before I move on to the next topic, what I wanted to also do is remind all of you that I do a Three Minutes with Stuart daily video. And you could check that out on my YouTube channel, The Couples Expert, where I give a daily tip. And I've been doing it now for about 170 days. I'm pretty proud of that. We have about 170 videos on different relationship tips on my YouTube channel. And I'd like all of you to go to YouTube, subscribe it, comment on them, I want it to be a dialogue, not a monologue. And you can find out a lot on my YouTube channel, The Couples Expert. And also don't forget, The Couples Expert has a Facebook page, and I would like you to please like that page so we can stay in touch in many different ways. I do the podcast, I do the Facebook group. I do all of this so I can give to the community, give back. Really, my love, my passion is helping couples and not everyone needs a counselor. So what I do is I offer these things so that people can really get the message in that way. Now, going back to our topic, one of the things with the retirement years, what with the excitement of, for some of you being able to travel, being able to do those things, the things that come up here is that there's also uh, an experience of a tremendous amount of loss loss of parents, loss of family. You know, let's face it, growing older can really be hard. We're losing family and friends to illness, to uh, our aging parents and uh, dealing with our adult children and their families. You know, what's harder than this? And we need to really face that both of you, when you lose a parent or lose a sibling, the loss that comes up, it doesn't just impact one of you. It impacts both of you. And we need to let each other grieve in the way that you need to. And not expecting grief to look like a certain thing. We want to let our partners know that we're both going through something. And that in the good times and in the bad times, we're there for each other. So, you know, as roles change, as loss happens, as all of these very, very emotional things occur, we could look at it as a really sad, pretty bad situation, or we could look at it and say, you know, life's an adventure. And this is how I choose to look at it at 61 years old. Life is an adventure. What I know is I feel better today than I ever have about myself. I'm more self-accepting. And as a result of that, that attitude, the attitude of life being an adventure, I know that there are going to be sorrow, there's going to be good. And I once had a therapist tell me something, and I really was upset with him, and I'm still not sure it was a good thing. But he said, enjoy the ride. Even the pain, allow yourself to experience it. Don't run from it. And just see it as part of this adventure. And I'm not sure I agree that we can do that so well. But I think it's not a bad attitude. We want to look at life as 
having different hills and valleys and our relationship also goes in that. And if you can accept that, if you can accept that you're going to have good times and bad times, and as you get older, even more so, it's going to be sort of this roller coaster with our declining physical health and also the decline in our mental abilities and memory, which can create a lot of tension for you and your partner. But what we want to do is maintain the best physical health we have, the best psychological health we have, so that we can be the best we can be for our partners. Doesn't mean our partners aren't going to struggle with some of it. I remember before I got my hearing aids, and I don't know how many of you know that I wear hearing aids, but the loss of hearing was a major challenge for our marriage because my wife always assumed that I didn't care about what she was saying. And when we realized that I had hearing loss and now I could hear her and be more responsive, it improved our marriage exponentially. And that lack of facing the hearing loss, even though the TV was up about 10 decibels and everyone was saying, Dad, Dad, your TV is so loud, which was the first sign, that when I did ultimately get my hearing check and find out and get the hearing aids, there was a quietness, <laughs> not only less fighting, less triggers, but less volume of the TV. And it then brings you to a place where now both people feeling important, which is so important, that unless we face our physical issues and our memory being another one, and I am definitely recognizing that I have to write more things down, make more lists, and do those things. And without doing those things, my wife thinks the things she tells me are unimportant. And sometimes, truthfully, sometimes she thinks or forgets that I have that challenge. So if it's something important, now she needs to write it down for me. And if she gets annoyed by having to do that and not doing it, then cause tension for us, it's, uh, it's, it gets you right back to that negative cycle. And if you're not aware of what's happening, it can really create a major event. Now, as the years continue and your physical health declines and illness comes into this play, one of the things that people need to start doing is preparing for your own death. Now, this is a tough one for me. It really is because I, I had children fairly late in life. Um, I was in my 40s before I had my first child. And one of the things that I recall thinking about when that happened was the sadness that I wasn't sure I would be around to see my kids get married. And as the years have gone on and medicine has done better and people are living now longer and longer, this is less of a challenge for me mentally, but it continues to sort of at times, if I allow it, I become sad. I become sad because what I recognize at 61 years old, that the likelihood of seeing my grandchildren getting married is less likely. And one of the things that I always see at weddings, which are so beautiful, is the multi-generations getting up there and, you know, having sort of a, a symbolic passing of the torch of marriage at times. And I wonder if I'll ever be able to participate in something like that. If I let myself get depressed about that, that could pull me away. If I don't allow myself to get pressed and just accept that this is part of what happens in life, then I say, I'm going to make the best relationships every day of my life that I have left. I'm going to make sure people understand that I love them, that I bring up the things that I'm authentic, that I'm genuine, and that I'm going to have every day 
going to act like every day could be my last day and not talk about something is not an option. That talking and letting people know that they matter to me is something that I will always do. Now, that's a good way of dealing with this issue in such a positive, loving way and not just letting yourself get down on it, but preparing for my death, both in terms of my relationships with the people in my life. So if something, God forbid, ever happened to me, my children would not say, oh, all we had was all this negativity that my daughters and I have actually made this commitment, whether we've spoken about it, hopefully they'll listen to this podcast. They don't always do that, but if they do, they'll hear it now if they don't know this. This is why Dad never wants any parting that we have to be negative and that repair is always something that's on the cards. And I urge all of you to do that, too. And, and I think the thing that comes up for me and how that really translated into a life experience for me is I was working back in Erie, Pennsylvania, and I was working at a family service agency. And what had happened is a good friend of mine at my agency was married to a guy who worked for a United Way agency. And in that agency was a man, and I met him a number of times at functions. He was a hell of a nice guy. And he was going on a business trip for the day. So he and two of his colleagues drove about 45 minutes. And on the way back, he passed away. He had a massive heart attack in the car. And by the time that they could get anywhere, he was gone. And what I learned had happened that morning is he and his wife had a tremendous fight. It was one of the worst fights they've ever had. They both said things they regretted, but they had to go to work. And then he passed away. She had to live with that aspect. When we recognize our life has a limited time, and I don't think we think about that enough, other than at the ends of our life when we turn 60, 70, or 80, we know that that's a reality. When you don't recognize that every day could be that way. And I, what I teach is that you should live every day as if it's your last in terms of how you treat the people in your life. And if we do that and we teach our children that, we're teaching our future generations that having a love, having someone in your life that you love is a responsibility. It's a huge one. And it's only for people who are mature enough to have that should have long-term relationship because you have to be able to stand back, look at the two of you and say, what is really important here? Do I want my epitaph to be my husband worked a lot, made a lot of money, gave his best to the people he worked with, and when he came home, there was nothing left for me. And one of the things I want to share about my trip to San Francisco is that was one of the messages that I took away with. That was my takeaway. My takeaway was I have to take care of me mentally, physically, and in all ways. And that unless I do that, I can't be the best counselor I can be if I can't be the best husband I can be, if I can't be self-nurturing, how can I give to others so that not self-sabotaging yourself is about being a good therapist, being a good husband, a good partner, a good friend, a good father, a good son. Being good to myself is being good to all of you. And as partners in a relationship, Unless we do that and we give to our partners our best, our later years become very shallow and we look back with lots of regret. And that's what we don't want. That's what I don't want for any of you to ever look back that way. So with loss comes awareness. I hope this awareness isn't 
just when you lose people in your life, but by sitting back and taking a look at the two of you and asking yourselves, what is it that you could offer the both of you in your relationship as it is today, whether you're in an early stage or a middle stage or a later stage? All of these stages have their own challenges. They all have things that you need to do in order to maintain a relationship where the two of you feel important to one another and that what I hope the takeaway from today is this stage is a byproduct of the last two stages. If we've accomplished what we needed to do in the beginning, developing a relationship, but developing a friendship, developing a commitment to making the two of you important, not discounting your friends and your family, but really making in a new marriage a relationship feeling like the two of you are in this world together in the middle stages to reinforce that with working as parents in a different way because of the challenges are different and then in the later years looking back at those two and saying we did great and whatever we didn't do this is the stage we're going to fix it that it's never too late you're never too set in your ways you can look at your partner square in the face and say I love you more than life itself and nothing matters more and let's fix whatever we haven't addressed because today is the first day of the rest of our life and it brings to mind a story of a gentleman I once met that basically turned to me at about 70 years old who said he had a life of empty relationships finally met someone and his life finally has meaning and he has no regrets because living one day with someone that matters to him and that he matters to makes his life worthwhile and have meaning. And that's what I want for all of you because you all really know that you matter. You need to tell your partner that all the time. And if you do that, your whole life will be a life of connection and love. And I want you to think about this every day and we'll see you next time. So take care and stay connected. Bye-bye.